Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Magda and today we're going to talk about my first host family. So let's get started. Just so you get the context of what we are talking about, I went from my Royal Youth Exchange six years ago to Colorado Glenwood Springs in US and I had three host families and today I'm going to share with you my story about my first host family and how was it, what were the pros and cons of my host family and how did I enjoy uh, living with them. So starting with first being that was very, very shocking for me. There were many rules and they were much different than the rules in my house. So starting with the rules like I couldn't be with the boy alone in the house, then I couldn't be with him in a room. If I was in a room, my host mom had to be in the house and I, the room has to be open. I had to ask before inviting my friends. I had to be in a certain hours at home. I always have to say if I would stay after school even like half an hour longer or something like this so it was a little bit controlling but at the same time i can understand why all the rules were made like this so it's kind of okay point number two will be actually a good side so my host mom was very caring she really cared what was going on she really wanted to know how am i doing how do I like school? How can she help me? She helped me with some bigger buyings I had to do. She went with me for a Black Friday. She definitely cared about me as her daughter. She was even going for parent-teacher conferences. She gave me her honest feedback. She was not only asking about her kids, but as well about me. I think that was the only host family that went for a parent-teacher conference and that actually gave me some feedback. So she told me that a lot of my teachers were saying that I'm not asking questions, that maybe I'm lost and I don't ask questions or something like this and that they are there to help. I was just not asking questions because in Poland it's not normal to ask questions to the professors, to the teachers, just because they will not answer it anyways. So it's there is no point of asking them. I mean, like some of them will, but it's not that normal that you ask the question that maybe you can check the answer with your colleague, with your classmate, or maybe you can find in a book. So asking the question just to ask the question, it's not the usual thing to do back in Poland. Going to point number three, unfortunately, I was treated as a 12 year old, maybe 13 year old person. Basically, I was in that moment 18. My host mom, because it was only host mom, and there were two host sisters with me. One of them was exactly about like 12, 13, and the other one was 15. In total, she had six or seven kids, I don't remember actually, but the rest of them were already in college. But she was very, um, how to say it, very afraid about what is going on, what are we doing, and like, I sometimes felt like I was treated like 12 year old and that moment I was 18 so I needed a little bit more freedom mostly because back in Poland I have a lot of freedom I mean my parents are not controlling me we're not controlling me right now obviously they don't because I'm 25 but I mean even when I was younger my parents were not controlling me I didn't have to check up with them 10 times a day and like you know calling them texting them letting them know about every single minute of my life and it was a little bit like this in this house family so i felt a little bit like 12 year old the situation that uh was actually the funniest like two of them first of all she was dropping us off at school even if we literally had to like cross the street which was super caring i have to say yes it was very nice as well during the winter it was super nice but very unnecessary and at the same time she was very afraid of us going back home me my host sister and two of her friends from the football game that finished at like 8 30 or 9 p.m and trust me my small city of 10,000 people Glenwood Springs was definitely not a dangerous city and we had to just cross the street and there were many many people going also our direction so she didn't have to like worry that much but she asked us if we wanted her to pick us up and actually my host sister had to kind of give a lot of arguments to not make her come uh, to pick us up but going to point number four, actually, I was lucky enough to have my host sister at the age of the high school. So she was, I believe, either a freshman or sophomore. And thanks to this, I could eat my first few lunches with her. She showed me around the school. I get to know her friends. She had very close two friends. They were always hanging out all together. I could hang out with them as well during the football games, during lunches. So first few weeks, they were very, very crucial. And thanks to this, I was not just alone and lost. <laughs> and when I met my friends, I was able to hang out more with my friends than my host sister that was much more younger. But I'm really, really thankful that I had siblings that were kind of my age and actually that one of them was in high school and could have helped me. Also, she gave me a lot of advice about like what sports are about, what a band and music is, which I should choose, how difficult it is to get in and all the information that was very, very useful. 
I finally was in a marching band because I didn't get into the volleyball team because actually to be in a volleyball team you had to know how to play well volleyball I was ju I just knew how to play I was not the best heavily for swimming it was not the case so when we entered the winter season actually I could go into swim team the only restriction was like you have to know how to swim and you don't have to be good or bad in volleyball team you actually had to be good to be in a volleyball team so yeah so that's uh, one of the things that she helped me a lot with and yeah and she was younger and it was nice to like you know it was easy to get the contact with her number five maybe surprising or not they were super catholic and actually i have to tell my host mom was not happy that i was not waking up on sunday morning to go for a mess and i don't go to church back in poland i'm not super catholic or christian and i don't like when someone make me go and in the next video about my host families you will see that with my second host family i was actually going to the church which was a methodist church but it was more because i love the community and how it worked and with this host family they kind of forced me to go and when someone forced me to do something i'm not doing it normally mostly when i knew what is the catholic church about and i'm not against catholic church or i'm not against what you are doing or whatsoever but i don't go to catholic church and i don't want to be forced to do it uh, mostly on Sunday morning they were going like super early and I really really needed the sleep because as you may watch my other video about why you are always tired while you are abroad I was always tired so I really need that sleep also on Sunday morning so yeah so definitely that was the thing that I didn't really enjoy and I didn't enjoy the conversation which we entered about some crucial topics which we had at school and then I ended up at home and it was not the nicest conversation so yeah I don't want to go into detail but basically this thing was a little bit difficult for me to know that they were a little bit more conservative and it was very difficult for me because I'm very, very liberal. So uh, that was a little bit difficult situation as well. Another good part of being with this host family, they brought me for a trip. So actually one of the host sisters, the girl who was actually on exchange the year earlier, that's why they were hosting me, went to college to Colorado Springs and we actually drove to Colorado Springs. I get to see Colorado Springs and all the places around and we were actually going in autumn. So I could see beautiful autumn in Colorado on the roads with the mountains. And we stopped in a lot of places. We went to zoo, we went for a little hike. We went to these funny restaurants where you just pay for entering and they you eat what you want to eat and it was actually amazing experience as well so they showed me around it was very nice from them and they were always like available for any pickups or dropping me off somewhere so that was definitely a huge pro of this host family and uh, i'm very thankful for giving me those opportunity for being able to, to visit the, the places to travel a little bit with them and yeah and just be for being available for me for my what i wanted to do let's say and when we are talking about the host sister that went on a on exchange a year earlier, actually my host mom was kind of thinking that I'm going to be the same as her daughter and that I'm going to get a little bit depressed during my exchange. She was trying to kind of make me not homesick in a way of like forcing me to call my parents more often for less time than less often for a longer time while for me i always did it since i was abroad i'm just calling my parents probably once a month maybe every few weeks for four or five hours and abroad actually for me it was crucial for learning the languages so i also avoided to speak polish so it was much easier to text them daily or even not every day because when I was in the US the huge time difference was making it kind of impossible to do so I just prefer to call them like on Saturday or Sunday or sometimes after school and we were finishing earlier and I didn't have anything to do to just talk with them for a few hours while she uh, with her daughter because I assume she was a little bit sad homesick depressed maybe they had a set hours for i think every morning or every week i don't remember she i remember that she was telling me that they were calling during the breakfast that she knew all the family also i think she kind of didn't want to tell me that she wanted to meet my family but i never kind of said that like, hey, come say hello to my family. And maybe that was a mistake as well from my side. My parents were also hosting someone in my house, so they were pretty busy over there as well. So I didn't have a need to call them every day. And she was kind of like commenting or 
uh, how I'm behaving with my family, if we are okay, like, you know, getting into the personal life, which I didn't appreciate a lot. I appreciate, as I told you, I appreciate that she was super caring, that she was always asking me how I'm doing, if I'm doing okay, if everything is good. But at the same time, she was sometimes getting into too private or too much advices that they were never asked. So she was never asked for advice about how I contact my family, how is it going, all of that stuff. And she was actually talking about it a lot. So, so yeah, so that was another thing that I a little bit struggled with. But as I told you that I think that she was thinking that it's a very good thing, that she was just caring, that she was just a very helpful. So I, I also appreciate that that she, she did it because I'm sure that there would be very big exchange student who actually needed to, to hear that, who actually would need that advice and maybe would uh, profit it from this advice. And last two things I wanted to mention are actually the dogs and the diet, healthy food, not healthy food, in my host family. So starting with the dogs, and they had actually two dogs. One of them was uh, of the host sister who just went to college, and another one was a like family dog. And the dog who was from my host sister, he literally hated me. The dog, I don't know why, but he didn't like me and he was barking at me every single morning when I was going out of my room. Actually, he pooped in my room the first day I went to school and the dog definitely was not my friend. I think he even tried to bite me a few times. The other dog was nice. The other dog was coming to me, was allowing me to pet him and was very good dog, let's say, but both of them I think needed much more time outside for like walks and all that stuff because they were actually never going for the walks. They were always going to the garden and they could do whatever they wanted in the garden but the garden was not that big so I think they were lacking a little bit of the walks I'm not a dog like super dog expert but again looking at my second host families the dogs were behaving totally differently and they were actually going for the long walks every single day or a few times a day so I believe they were like two short and one long walk during the day or sometimes two long and one short so actually there was a big difference between the dogs and my two host families. Uh, but again, I will tell, tell you more in another video. However, uh, the dogs were nice and not nice in the same time to have. And it was not a choice. So it's lucky that I'm, that I'm not like afraid of dogs because in a rotary application, you only say if you are allergic to something, but what if I would be afraid of dogs or traumatized or whatsoever, then maybe the information about like host family having an animal would be a nice thing. And about the healthy diet. I've seen so much weird things in the US about food, about the definition of healthy food, about preparation of food. And this host family was one of the families that showed me the weird stuff they do in the US. Like, first of all, there was a lot of frozen stuff. Second, the lack of vegetables. I mean, I'm lucky that I had any, <laughs> to be honest, but mainly the vegetables that there were, there were like baby carrots, the peas in um, like the, the green one, I will show you the picture what I mean. Then the apples with caramel sauce, just already cut it in the bag. Sometimes we will get some corn or some random vegetable or the Caesar salad, but I would say the variety was about maybe up to six, seven things from vegetables and fruits. And I can kind of understand it because it was very, very expensive in Colorado. The fruits and vegetables were like double or triple the prices in comparison to other states. But uh, I was liking it a lot. And at the same time, I had a lot of frozen meals or actually pre-prepared frozen stuff. So let's say we were often eating the a chicken breast already in a teriyaki sauce that was already frozen like this so you just have to pop it to the to the microwave or i don't know in a pan i think in a microwave to make it uh, done the same we we're doing rice in the microwave we were doing the corns like the corn like whole corn she was somehow wrapping it up in a paper towel and like doing it in the microwave like very very weird things which normally we would do like in water in Poland or maybe on a barbecue or something like this so some things were very very weird and definitely not diversified so it was a little bit difficult for me to get used to it however there were also the good parts so there were like the protein shakes that I really really loved for the breakfast that was actually the cool breakfast they were always like the frozen fruits which you could add to this protein shake sometimes the cocoa powder or something like this so they were also a good part of this thing and not so healthy but very delicious there was always available the lemonade L lemonade i mean like the 
lemonade powder, which I fell in love to when I was back in the US. Actually, that was one of my favorite drinks. Very, very unhealthy, but very tasty, in my opinion, at least. Some people will say that it's horrible, but I was in love with it. So yes, so that's a fun part. And happily, they, they try some Polish cuisine. I don't know if they actually liked it. They say they did, but honestly, no clue. So yes, yeah, so the, the food was not the highest point of this family, I have to tell, but it was not the lowest. In a way, I know that it could be much, much, much worse. So I, I'm not complaining. But yeah, this is overall how my first house family life looked like. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to know something more or tell me about your experience with your host family or what you are afraid about or how do you think it works and what may cause some issues or what you are thankful about from your host family. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. That helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm so this video will reach more people. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my channel. That way you will not miss any of my future videos. I talk a lot about Rotary Youth Exchange, studying abroad, Erasmus program and my life abroad currently in Luxembourg. So if you enjoy this type of topic, subscribe to my channel. And here I'll leave you the video about American High School and the Rotary Youth Exchange playlist. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you in another video.